All right, so this right here, um, in Super Mario, well, yeah, let's just run, I'm not gonna pause, I'm gonna run through it. So the first thing we do, we're gonna teach the player about the first enemy in the game, the Goomba. This is like your thesis statement, whether you want the player to learn. Um, so in Mario 1, things were a lot more open. Uh, you want to teach players moving to the right. Now the players, this is a little bit more advanced. So we're making things a little denser. And so very quickly, we're going to teach players about rewards. And then we're going to introduce players to this new platform type. <laughs> well, I have, I have some things to say about Mario 64, but, um, this, they're very, they're hard to compare. Um, so Mario 3 is going to teach you about these semi-transparent blocks right away um, and how they work differently. So if I just choose to run through it, um, we're going to learn that. That's a new concept in this game, in the Mario universe. Well, technically not new because Mario 2 did that as well. But assuming you skip that, um, you're going to learn that. And you're going to be inclined to try to get these rewards. And if you explore... And you learn how to use the semi-transparent block, boom, you're going to get it rewarded. So very well done, very well structured. Then we're also training you for these denser levels. This is the first time uh, Piranha Peets are going to fire fireballs at you. <laughs> no, I ain't say you're trash. I just think that the games could be designed a little better. Um, so if I didn't learn how to hop on these blocks here, we're going to... I have opportunity here to do it, if even by ac you know by accident, and you're kind of forced to do it by accident. And even if somehow I ended up down here, when you get here, you're gonna see these Koopa Troopas moving on the platform. So very quickly, you've learned everything about semi-transparent blocks and how to use them. Now, you've you're used to stepping on Koopas. That's been done before in Mario One. And if you're anything like me and you're holding the B button whenever you're playing with Mario, you're going to do this almost by accident. And then you're going to learn a next, whoops, key concept in Mario 3, which is, oh, we're going to be hitting things and getting rewards from the sides now. You could do that in Mario 1, but it wasn't nearly as common as it was in 3. Um, because of my talking, I'm running out of time. So, these ramps... These kind of runways, these these were installed later in the game when uh, Tezuka realized, oh, we're going to need these for this. These coins breadcrumb you up, so we're, we're teaching the player very quickly about how to use the raccoon leaf and when you're going to use it. It's very discreet, and boom, you're going to get a nice little reward. And if you're like, hey, that was nice, that was fun, they give you this other little ramp, and it's, it's kind of like, okay, let's see if we could exploit this a little bit more. And naturally... Um, this is probably the first thing I did whenever I learned flight in Mario 3. I was a little kid, so it took me a little while. And then boom. I, I could go back and show more, um, but it's not super worth it. Let's um, clear the level. Um, it does, if you come, come back here, it does want to give you an opportunity to learn about the rewards of brick breaking. And you see I accidentally killed myself, which means there's two ways I can get these bricks. I could use the raccoon leaf. Or I could use Koopa Troopas, which are a little bit more challenging. So you automatically start to see, can I make it? How you're rewarded for the Raccoon Leaf. And the level is designed to be built around that. What are all the ways we could reward the player for the Raccoon Leaf? So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to um, reset the game. And we're going to go back to Mario World. Because like I said before, Mario 3 has a thesis statement right away. So if you looked at the, the beginning, it teaches you like all the key things you're going to be doing. Like that's throughout the game that we're going to build on. The types of enemies you're going to be running into. The types of platforms you're going to be using. The, 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 the power-ups you're going to use. How you're going to interact with them. How you're going to be rewarded for them. I hate this intro. It's so silly to me. It's like they just gave up. Looks like Bowser's at it again. Okay, fine. Fine. Not that Mario 3 is Shakespeare, but this to me was like, all right, we, we've given up on... I... So this is my first experience playing Mario World. I do this. I think I'm going to get a Yoshi. 
There's no Yoshi. I don't know what the heck this is. I'm just... I don't know, has anyone ever actually gone back to, like, grind for these berries here? Like, so I don't get this. So I've got three choices. I do that. Alright, nothing. Do I go right? Alright, that's Yoshi's Island 2. Okay, do I go left? Okay, it's Yoshi's Island 1. Okay, fine. I I'm not gonna kill the game for this, but that was my first reaction. So again, thesis statement. Right here. Let's. Where's my pointer? Right? This right here? <laughs> of all the things that I, you know, that doesn't even bother me too much but I got you <laughs> alright so this right here this is the first thing you run into right so you're kind of thinking this is going to be a key aspect of the game and you could kind of see it it's an interesting aspect like you there's a ramp and enemies might start flying down the ramp and start shooting at you like you know, not like liter like not like a gun shoot but like shooting down and coming at you so that's that's one thesis statement so let's come here now if you play the game this doesn't happen that much next thing you're gonna see giant bullet bills all right now this really irritates me to no end well I'm about to tear it down <laughs> this giant bullet bill irritates me to no end um, because first of all Bullet bills were like build-ups, like you don't get it until, you don't see bullet builds until World 5 in Mario 1. And you don't see them until the airship in Mario 3, so you're kind of building up to something. Like this should be, you know, mean and threatening, and instead it's the second enemy you see in the game. And I think it's just the Nintendo's way of like just trying to like um, impress you, like, oh look, giant bullet bills. Okay, fine. They're not that threatening. And I should say, okay, you do learn about Yoshi coins if you choose to interact with it, fine. Next enemy you see, Rex. And then the next thing you immediately see are flying, uh, flying question blocks. So let's, I want to talk about those things for a minute as well. Because these stupid things right here, you're thinking, okay, you hit them twice, and that's how they're different from Goombas. And it's like, okay, that's going to change the game. And so, like I said, this is first level. This is your thesis statement. What is this game going to be about? And you don't see these Rexes until World 6 on Chocolate Island. This is the only time you see them in this level until them, at then. And it kind of drives me nuts because it's like this is the first world. This is what you're going to be doing. So you barely see these again until later. And you barely see the giant bullet bills until later. And those flying question blocks, you could do a lot with them. And they do show up occasionally. Are they a huge part of the game? Not necessarily. And even, man, I'm already into it with this game even as a kid i'm like oh flying question blocks that's going to be a big thing and i remember playing it and thinking it wasn't that big of a thing so it does show up man i hate this game so much all right i'm gonna run through it so that th again this is your thesis statement what am i learning uh, i'm i'm not learning the most important things in the game because they're throwing enemies at me that don't really get used now this is important now Again, an interesting choice, and I think it's because they wanted to make it easier, is that you don't hit bricks from the bottom. You could actually flip these from the bottom, even as small Mario. So the reward for being big Mario is doing this. I don't think that happens nearly enough in the game to justify um, this design choice. So, okay, that's neat. Okay, I learned something. If I chose to engage with that. Do they do that that much in the game? Um, from my memory, not necessarily. Um, cool. Cool cool uh, otherwise fine i learned ducking this is important information you do want to learn this it shows up occasionally it could have shown up more and what would have been really 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 cool is if they used yoshis more to make it so that having the yoshi would make this jump uh very 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 rewarding and if there was a consistent trade-off between, oh, sometimes I have the Yoshi, sometimes I don't, and it's designed so that if I don't, I can't take advantage of this as much, and I need other ways. This is fine. That's a smart design. Um, and then, of course, I get a Fire Flower, and as the games go on, Fire Flowers become more and more useless, because I could do that, and I could do that, and the level's not constrained enough for the fire flower to be all that interesting now in a yeah okay fine so now in a game where
Okay, got it. In a game where there's a Mario with the Yoshi and a cape at the start of the game, I didn't get a Yoshi, and I didn't get a cape, and I got a Fire Flower, and I got all these enemies that you barely see later on in the game. And you're not even going to see them later on in the world, because this is how it builds up next. I'm not going to do the... The ex, the, you know, that's a good idea. It gives you long-term gameplay loop. Getting that, um, getting the, um, the the switch. But um, okay. So the next thing it wants to teach me is if I pick this up, I can get a reward for hitting Koopas. Now I find that to be a strange reward because in Mario Three, you actually the when you hit the Koopa shell. You get the raccoon leaf, which is a big part of the game. You constantly hit things and get those types of rewards. That reward, I'm going to hit things in sequential order to get a one-up. That's a strange first lesson because it, it, it really doesn't, um, it doesn't show up that often in this game. It's not a key player in this game. It could have picked a, a better and more interesting reward, but whatever. I'm not going to spend too much energy on it, and I'm not going to spend too much energy on this level because I pl I did a video on this level, so I'm going to run through this. It's just boring. It's just... Okay, cool. I, I mean... I, and how often do you ever actually need that in the game? Not often. It's not designed to need it that often. Look, look it's all straight. Everything, it's straight lines and stairs... That's pretty cool. I wish the game was designed with that a little bit more. Um, straight lines. Just going straight. Yeah, I could interact with this. I'm not. I did a video on it. So I'm going to run through this one. Because I don't want to say anything more about this level. It's kind of boring. Uh, so we're going to skip through that. Alright, World 1-3 is very interesting to me. Oh, okay, you know what? I, I had these reversed in my mind. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back to... Can you elaborate on how introducing a red turtle and a green turtle does teach that turtles have different abilities with Yoshi? Well, it does. I mean, it's not... I'm going to... Hold on, I'm going to save here. I'm going to... Go back to, whoops, file. All right. Um, on how introducing red and green does teach it. Well, it, because it introduces you to them in sequential order, if you decide to interact with them, you'll learn quickly, oh, by eating the red Koopa, you spit out fire. By eating the green Koopa, you just spit it out normal. It did a decent job of putting that charging chuck later on so that if you save that Koopa shell, you could just attack with it. Hey, what's up, Skate? All right, so this next level I'm going to play is not terribly interesting, but when I get to World 1-4, you're going to see me uh, get very excited. Um, so... So in World 1-1 was a bit of a thesis statement. That thesis statement taught us some of the basic concepts. Now we're going to build very slowly. Oh, you know, you learned about normal platforms. Now you're going to be able to play around with. Thank you. Uh, you're going to be able to play around with scroll with um, with uh, ba -ba -ba hills. This is the first time I think you ever have hills in the Mario game. Um, I can say stuff about this level. So now that I don't have the raccoon leaf, I'm penalized for it. And so I have to kind of be a little bit trickier to get this. So cool, I did. And I'm gonna do that here. Now, if, if I explore, I learn I have a choice. I could go down this pipe or I could do this. And in theory, it means I can't go down that pipe anymore. But if I'm if I choose to interact, if I'm clever enough, if I'm if I'm rewarded enough, I can use this raccoon leaf to get me up there. So let's if I really really want to get up there, if I really really want to do it, 
and I don't really really want to do it because I don't want to make you guys watch but in theory I could fly up there go down this pipe and get those rewards so there there's a there's a reason for me to stop and there's a reason for me to evaluate and there, there's a lot of density here uh, for such a small space I'm not gonna make people watch me struggle to fly up there but I can do it uh, then you learn that another key object in the game which are these um, note blocks which what it did very cleverly is it put you in a controlled environment here where you could kind of learn a little bit in a controlled space and then when we then we get into a more threatening space and then we could play around with it and oh cool I'm rewarded and we could run through this I'm gonna get the star boom Yeah, I don't think it does. I think um, Nintendo always had this theory that people would chat and discuss. Um, I, I don't remember any real hints that the white blocks do that. That, um, But uh, I'm not going to get the warp whistle. I was going to go to 1-4, but I do want to have the raccoon leaf. Um, so, one of the things that 1-3 uh, wants to teach us is, again, the usefulness of breaking bricks and getting a bunch of rewards. And I'm going to grab the raccoon leaf here. Yeah, Nintendo kind of had this theory that people would chat and trade notes. And that's how people would discover the white block and things like that. Oh, I forgot about that. I've played this game so many times and for me to forget about that raccoon leaf. Um, so here, if you do choose to explore, there is going to be another little learning opportunity for why the raccoon leaf is useful. Um, which is this guy here. And this differentiates, if you remember in Super Mario 1, you get the beanstalk and you get these coins. Well, this is a little bit of a differentiating factor. Um, I'm not, I'm not getting whistles. There is a whistle here. People know it. So, but let's, uh. Now, if it is one thing that does bother me about Mario 3, is there are too many lives that I could get. And maybe that's because I've played the game and got good at it enough. Um, but I think it's too many lives. Let me save. World 1-4. I love. I love World 1-4. I love everything about... 1-4. I love this level so much. I think it's the first auto-scroller in the Mario game. Uh, it's great, and it's going to show you the difference between a good auto-scroller and a bad one. I love everything about this level. Um, so, okay. Uh, yeah, I, the thing is, for me, it's going to be easier for me to switch back and forth between uh, Mario 3 and Mario World by using the Super All-Stars, so, but uh, sure, I, I kind of, yeah, I kind of have a fondness for the NES version of 3. Okay, so, you know, this is the first time you, you've been running and jumping, you've, you've learned how to move with Mario in the controlled space, now we've got a less controlled space because we have the auto-scroller. And right away, the game is going to start teaching you how your decision making, how your current status, you're going to be rewarded for these things and you're going to be playing on risk reward. Okay, we learn about the falling platforms in a controlled environment. Okay, right here. I love this. There's going to be an easier path and a harder path. The easier path is going to be for me to kind of come up top. The harder path is when I, if I choose to go to the bottom, and it's going to be easier for me to get the bottom path when I have the raccoon leaf, because I could use that little tail thing. So I could feel that reward right away. So let's go back to the game. So I could just jump up very easily and get that path on the top. But I've, you know, now I've kind of, I know the game enough to have anticipated this, but going to the bottom is going to be slightly harder. And, and not all that, there's two reasons why it's going to be harder. It's going to be harder to make that maneuver. And it's four blocks to land on instead of just two. 
So I'm and I'm now I'm about to be rewarded for making a harder action and for now my exploration. And if one thing I think people know this, but depending on where you hit the block in Mario uh, three, the the mushroom will go on the opposite side. So I'm gonna hit this guy here, and you ah. Oh. Oh, that was brilliant. So, and you even see that block ran interference on me, making it harder for me to get that one up. Um, but in theory, had I executed on that properly, I would have gotten the one up. It's beautiful, but it gets even more beautiful because this is another favorite part of mine in Mario Three. Uh, is right here. Let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna kill I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of that on purpose. Because the beauty is over to the right, there's going to be a 1-up. And that 1-up, in order to get it, you have to get it from the side. If you're a Raccoon Mario, you get that easy. You just swing your tail at it, you get the 1-up. And so that's, that's beautiful, because you're rewarded for your status, and it's very discreet. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's a Raccoon Leaf here. If I, you know, So now, if I want to get the Raccoon Leaf and I don't have it, there's some time pressure. I could try to get it, but in this case, I'm not going to. I have all these choices here. I could choose to try to get the raccoon leaf. I could choose to not bother getting the reward that's about to come. Or I could make a more challenging maneuver and try to do that. And that rewards me for my skill. I love that. Same thing here. All right, coming up here. It's the, the easy move here. The easy move is going to be to jump on this platform and then jump over it and then land here if I and I and I'll skip all the rewards but this is why I hate that you do get too many rewards because it makes this less of a choice and that this is where I wish it would have gone a little bit in the opposite direction but okay whatever but still I can make the harder move and get those coins which I kind of because I paused and was distracted I could choose to hang around there and get those coins now again, my pausing and stuff threw off my timing a little bit. And great. Awesome. But this whole level is packed with things to evaluate and choices to make. I, I love this level. I love it. This is one of my favorite levels ever in the game. I love it. And so now I'm going to jump back to a level that in theory feels a lot like these things, but it actually doesn't do any of them. So I'm going to save it right here. And I'm going to jump back to, to this guy here. Now, this, this level is not an auto-scroller, but it feels a bit more analogous to 1-4. This kind of open space, a lot of platform jumping. All right, but we're going to look here. And I'm going to ask. Anyone can stop me and tell me, when is there a decision to be made? Um, so, in theory, you, if I did get the switch, I would have learned that I, have, I can get some extra coins. There's some extra safety. That's all cool. I like that. Um, it's running and jumping. No decisions here, other than do I wait on this or not. They did it, I think they did it for a challenge, and they kind of did it, it, it is kind of control where you do get to decide where you want it to go. So I actually love it, but I, I, I know that they wanted to make the game a little easier, and, and I think that's why they did it. Um, so here, look, this level is about learning about how the switches can advantage you in some way. But again, there's no real choices. I'm just walk running and jumping. And it's fun to run and jump in Mario World. Yeah, I liked it. I was always a fan of it. And so it was a balance between you had control and you also, it was like, oh shoot, I couldn't hit it from the side I wanted to. How do I deal with this? Um, so again, I'm just cool. I don't see a real reason to interact with this too much there's nothing that's going to reward me okay i get cool one up for having the yoshi by now like same thing i'm looking at this and i'm just looking for where is there a decision for me to make and again mario world gets away with a lot because because the the toy is fun running and jumping is fun uh the colors are fun like, it, it's fun to run and jump in this. This is probably maybe my favorite level in the game. Um, I think this, I guess you could consider this kind of a choice. And then you'd be safer if you 
if you didn't, if you got the switch and then you learn about the P switch and they give you ample opportunities to learn about P switches and the advantages of that. But like all in all, it's like the Yoshi isn't giving me any major benefits. The Fire Flower is not giving me any major benefits. The decision making isn't really there. I'm just moving forward. I'm just plowing ahead. And, and honestly, what really bothers me about this game with that is that this plowing ahead, in my opinion, and I have to go back and play these games, this is starts to feel reminis reminiscent of what I don't like about the, the new Super Mario Brothers games. Hey, man. Zach, you missed me fawning over level 1-4. Um, the greatest level ever. Um, or one of them. So, like, here, it's like, there's just, it's, there's nothing, there's no choices, there's no evaluation. It's just, I move forward, I move forward, I move forward. I still don't feel that the Yoshi is helping me in any way. I don't know why they keep giving me fire flowers. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this stupid thing. I can't even use the fire flower while I have the Yoshi. So this thing is useless. And again, there's, look, there's... Oh, so many opportunities here. So many opportunities here. If you, if you have something outside of the critical path, where maybe if I, like... I hate this game. Like, here's... Oh, I hate this game so much. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. I hate this game. Whoops. Right. That's on me. That's my fault. I did that. I did that. Now, oh, this drives me crazy. All right, I'm going to get the mushroom. But just imagine you get here and just like in 1-4 of Mario 3, like what if there's like a Koopa Troopa and that Koopa Troopa, if you grab it and you move it somewhere, you could hit something and you get a reward for it or there's some kind of ice block so if you eat the koopa troopa with with the red sh with yoshi like a red koopa troopa you spit fire at it uh and then you clear something or if you have fire flower and there's like ice blocks or something you fire at them and you get a reward like there's nothing here to reward you for any of like there, it's there's no reason to not just go straight there's no reason to not go off the beaten path and and, and then you, again you barely feel rewarded for the things that you have like, the Yoshi doesn't help me here at all. The Fire Flower doesn't help me here at all. You don't even get the cape. The, you don't get the cape until the World 2. Again, I'm just going straight. Uh, there's nothing to evaluate. There's, no, there's nothing for me to do. Why am I doing this? We're just running and jumping. Which is fine for most games. You know what? A lot of platformers did that, but I don't expect that from a Mario game. I expect more from a Mario game. I expect more than I'm just going to run and jump. Alright. I'm going to hoard. I'm going to run back and get the Yoshi because I need that for this next level. Maybe you get it and I forget. But I'm going to... Will it let me keep it? I forget. Yep. Yeah. I Which it shouldn't. But okay. I have the Yoshi. This is an interesting level. Because this is one with a lot of potential and a, a lot of missed opportunity. Cool. Fire flower. Yeah, that's nice. Do you, do you get to use it? Alright, so one thing. I can do that and get some rewards. Right? Yeah. I think I got one-ups. I missed them, but there are rewards up there, and I'm going to waste time showing it. So that's cool. That's You get rewarded for exploring. And you're going to get rewarded. So this is clever. This is smart that they have these spikes here. Because these spikes are an opportunity for you to learn, oh, you have an advantage with the Yoshi. Now, this is a thing I really hate about this game, is that they don't use spikes nearly enough in this game, because that's something where having the Yoshi is really cool. Now, I'm going to show you another thing that drives me nuts. If I go down here, this enemy is a really well-designed enemy for Yoshis. It's a, This is a wonder... Because... 
they're they're high, so they're not easy to jump over. But you have a Yoshi, and because you have a Yoshi, you do that, and you get some rewards, and it it makes the challenge less difficult. So you're rewarded for having the Yoshi. That's in theory very cool. I'm gonna show you. There's a couple of reasons why this doesn't actually end up working out. Because, let's see, let's see if this happens now. I'm gonna jump off, oh, I hate this game. I'm gonna jump off this Yoshi. Look at this. Thank you, Andrew, I'm gonna show it again. If I could find it, I can't even find my cursor anymore. Pointer, there it is. Look at that. It went down from five to three because I'm not on the Yoshi anymore. So it's like, it actually reduced the challenge because my status is worse. I, so the thing that would be a reward is not even a reward anymore because now it's actually lower. It actually reduced the challenge. And here's another thing. This could have been a cool enemy. You only see it, I think, one more time in Star Road. So you don't even see this thing again. So this game keeps throwing things at you that you never see. Giant Bullet Bill, Rex, uh, these things. The spikes. The tail? I'm not sure what you're talking. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. It's cool until you realize you're not actually rewarded for the Yoshi. And then not only that, it could be cool if you have like you could have levels where you have these giant pokies and if you eat them, there are rewards behind them. But of course you don't see them again. You don't see them. They only show up once. There's so many things in this world that they just raise and dismiss and you only see once. I hate this. I hate this game. I hate this game so much. I hate this game. <laughs> Did I lose my Yoshi? No, I didn't. So, like, it just takes the idea like, oh, I'm rewarded for this. And it's not a reward anymore. Now, you probably barely even know it. Because, again, these things barely show up in the game. And I don't know, why do I even have the Fire Flower? They don't do anything in this level. They don't do anything in any of these levels. And here, when I make my video, this is a game where the level designers, they just fucking love straight lines. They just, they de they design things with straight lines all over the place. I can't stand it. But okay, yeah, you're rewarded for the P-Switch because you can get these platforms. Okay, fine. This is cool. Right, safety, it gives you this extra little bit of safety. That's well designed. Those spikes are really well designed. Unfortunately, you barely see these spikes again. So there should have been spikes all over this game. And that would have made the Yoshi interesting. But they're, they're not anywhere. Yeah, it's like making those pokies lower when you don't have the Yoshi, would be like, if you don't have the raccoon leaf, we're going to put all the one-ups on the ground. So there's just no reward for it. I'm going to save. I'm going to finish out Mario 3, and then we'll finish it out with World. <laughs> so, I, I mean, 1-4... I mean, that's the level I like talking about the most uh, in this in this game, or in this world in particular. Um, it, it, I don't think that the, late, the levels after that are nearly as good, uh, but we'll run through these. Uh, I Like, the Fire Flower is kind of a weird one in this game, too, and it's kind of a weird one here. Yeah... Yeah, no, it's, it's... Hello. So I'm kinda, I think I'm nearing the end unless people want me to hang after this, but... Yeah, Fire Flower, like, it's useless, kind of, in this level, but what we will get is some nice carryover if I choose to keep it. So there's an opportunity to learn about... Um, why am I blanking on their names? Uh... Learn about these guys here. Uh, obviously, like, I, I, I didn't learn about getting the whistle from the wizard. I learned about it by just kind of discovering this and remembering Super Mario World, grabbing the raccoon leaf and flying over. So, okay, this is a good part to talk about this. I don't like this part. I don't like this part at all. 
and it's even worse in Mario World because this is it, 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 I'm just kind of waiting and what I really don't like I don't like when the Mario game is about running and jumping and you have all this space that just kind of goes unused so it, it's kind of useless space and now I'm just kind of waiting and moving but luckily in Mario 3 it's not that long and it's painless so I just kind of run through it and I'll give it credit for kind of a theming kind of thing where it makes you feel a little bit of extra threat before we get to the boss enemy. So we get a little bit of a minor reward for for that. If I, I mean, those things are so easy to beat that I'm not that rewarded for the fire flower, but okay. But because I kept it, this thing's going to be fairly useful in the next level and we're going to see how. Because then we move into a level that's a little bit about tighter spaces. So I learned quickly, like, it forces me to learn that I could kill enemies by sliding down. So that's pretty clever. Boom. Now, it's this is kind of an interesting thing where there's a balance here where your, your Fire Flower is a ranged attack that can't kill those beetles. But, but with the Raccoon Leaf... It's, it's a shorter attack, but you can kill them. So there is a balance. There is a there is a trade-off. Could they have done that better in this game? Yeah. Like, the Raccoon Leaf is the star of this game, bar none. It's not the Fire Flower. Um, and I kind of wish they gave you more Hammer Bros since they attack enemies and fortress levels better. Uh, if you do go up here as, the, as Fire Mario, you'll learn there's a penalty for not having the Raccoon Leaf. And the trade-off is, I'm not going to be able to get the one up that's up, up in the sky. Um, I don't find this to be the most interesting level to talk about. Uh, I don't think it's a bad level, but I, I don't think it's an amazing one by any means either. Not like 1-4. One 1-4 four. One four is, is, is genius. But, I mean, the, the thing is, too, like, you can still see that, that all the placement... And that's a, here's another thing. The maps on Mario 3 are way more interesting. Like, I know that Mario uh, World is kind of seamless. But, like, like what's actually cool is what, if I don't complete all the levels... Alright, I'm going to have to go over it with you again. Because it's, like, one of the best levels in gaming history. <laughs> They skip it because they're babies, but there's so much there's so much decision making you can make in that level. So this is neat. Um, if I want to get what's in here, very clever. Only three blocks of space uh, to get the raccoon leaf. I'm going to be rewarded handsomely for the raccoon leaf. I could just blow by all these things, uh, but. This section here, um, this, where's my pointer, is re very reminiscent of 1-2 in Super Mario 1, where there's this tight space, a Koopa um, in this tight space here, and it's kind of risky to go down here, but because I have the Raccoon Leaf um, and my abilities, it's going to be a little less risky or not. I'm going to screw up. Um, and which means I can't really show what I wanted to show, which is that with the raccoon leaf is an opportunity to run past this ramp and skip a section of the level. And it's nice and discreet and it's really well designed, uh, because if you're just learning, if you're just a kid, you're just playing, going down here and going through this is a little bit more risky. But with the raccoon leaf, I could have just skipped this entire section, get a couple of extra coins, etc. And we're done. It's no 1-4, but it's still solid. And then we're learning, incidentally, about how these wired platforms work again. <laughs> 
And so the final, the, the, the next level I really want to talk about the most is going to be the final fortress level in Mario World. Because I can't stand that and I can't stand all the fortress levels for the most part in Mario World. So I'm going to try to run through this one. Um, and so again, so the first time you get a bullet bill of any type in this game is this kind of threatening, ominous scenario. You've just gone through a whole world. And now it's like, okay, now we're going we're going into the danger zone here. And where Mario 1, it's just like the first thing you see, big giant bullet bill. Okay. So you don't even build up to any tension. Again, Fire Flowers I've established is not that useful in this game as much as I'd like. And I wish they would have built on that more rather than just... Um, okay, I, I, at the end of this, I'm going to go back and play 1-4 again. And uh, uh, for those who missed my fawning over it. This is a quick level, but it really combines everything, right? It combines... It combines the... Um, it combines the auto scroller it combines the need for kind of like running and jumping in in a more in kind of a, a an athletic way um it, it combines a lot of the skills that you were using in the previous game yeah i'm gonna go back and run through that and i'll it'll be an opportunity to talk about one one again for for some folks who might have missed it and I'll, I'll run through and talk about that real quick and then i'll breeze through level two and we'll get to one four um because it's one of my favorite levels ever and even if you don't love the level on its own, you'll see the principles of great Mario design and you'll see that spread throughout other portions. So let's, um, so this is the one disadvantage of uh, Mario 3 is that I can't go back to those levels. Uh, you're out of your mind, Jason, but that, I love that about you because you'll say things that I completely disagree with uh, and it's all good. Sometimes you have some wins. Okay. Anyone who saw my video. Yeah, I mean... So I did say this in Mario 3 that the theming of the smashing is cool. But the actual, like, gameplay... Like, okay, so what have I learned so far in this game? In theory, I learned about Yoshi's. In theory, I learned about running and jumping. In theory, I learned about the usefulness of the Fire Flower. And I say in theory, because I'm not even sure that's true. So then I get into this. And again, like this, like, like your, your ending level should be a culmination of everything that you built upon. So I said before, at the start of this video, your first world, your first level is your thesis statement. Then it's a body. Then it's a conclusion. So in Mario 3, your thesis statement, it shows you all the platforming you're going to be doing. And then it keeps building on it slowly. And then we culminate in the conclusion. Oh, auto scroller level in the air, right? And it's important that it's in the air because the main player in that game is the raccoon leaf. And so the raccoon leaf is designed to be in an open space. So they put the final levels in Mario 3 on an airship. And that's going to be more of an open space. You could do more with that. Did they do as much as I would have liked for them to do? Not necessarily, but they did it. And this, what is, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, it's the thesis is everything we've shown you, you're not necessarily going to be doing. Because you don't even get the cape in the first world. They throw enemies at you that you don't see until like way, 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 way later. And they never add up. And so if the video I have to do on Mario World is to go through literally every single level to show how none of this adds up, then that's what I'll do. But I'm sorry. There's nothing about the first world that tells me I should be climbing gates and not using a Yoshi. And not only am I climbing gates and not using a Yoshi, it's boring. Like if anything, I will at least say it is fun running around and jumping with the Yoshi. And then on top of it, this whole level should be threatening, but really, I'm just going to be collecting one-ups like a maniac.
Yeah, okay. This is so... I'm so terrified here. I don't understand. This is so boring. This is so boring. You don't use this throughout any of the rest of the level or the world. Nothing adds up. Wow, it's so dangerous. Look at me, collecting one-ups like crazy now. Oh no. Oh no, not Bowser's Castle. Oh no. Oh, this is horrible. I'm so scared. Look at this. Oh no. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I'm glad you had fun. Alright, and then again here. Like, this is okay for theming, but, like, where this is a lot stronger, um, the second fortress in Mario 3, where there's spikes at the top and spikes at the bottom, but in theory you could jump over and on top, and then there's actually, there's also a boo in the environment. But, like, what drives me nuts here is just, like, again, all that space goes unused. Mario's a platformer. I should be running and jumping and exploring. And instead, I'm just waiting. And I, there's nothing to interact with because the entire Y-axis is completely useless. I mean, they're, they're Mario games. I don't know that any of them are, are scary, but like this this level should be like, feel like the biggest challenge and it should feel like the stuff I did adds up. And not only that, not only do, do they not add up, but I'm just literally just collecting one-ups like a maniac. Like that should not happen in the last level of a stage. And oh, by the way, I don't even get to use the Yoshi, so I, I still don't understand. I still don't understand. So, that's that. Let's go back, since some folks missed it, and it seems like there's enough people willing to engage. I'm gonna, I'll probably wrap this up playing Mario 3, and we'll go back to that, we'll go back to that 1-4 stage. Now, it's the funny thing is, I skip 1-3 because it's boring as hell. But 1-4... So again, right here, I'm going to do this quick. But very quickly, we learn about Koopas. Very important. We learn how to get some rewards. We get our mushroom. We learn about semi-transparent blocks. Even if we don't think we, we're, we're learning about it, we just seamlessly learn about them. We seamlessly learn the, that you could land on them just by seeing the Koopa on the top here. If you're holding the B button... You're very likely to learn that you could pick these up. You're learning a very key aspect of Mario 3, which is hitting things from the side. Because they give you rewards. You get this ramp, which they added later in the game. When they realized they needed these, these coins will breadcrumb you up. Cool, nice little reward. I'm learning why this raccoon leaf is really great. Boom. And you know what? I'm clever. Let's try that again. Awesome. Great, great first level. Wonderful. This is my second favorite level. Maybe my first in the game. Or in the world. Maybe? If, if people really want to stick around and see me play 1-2. Or World 2. I, I, don't, I don't know, Jason, if you're referring to World 2 of Mario World or Mario 3. If you really want me to suffer, yeah, make me play World... I'm running through this. I already talked about this. It's not that fun. I mean, it's not terrible. It, it, it's okay. This is a fine level. It's not my favorite. Keep screwing up. Of which... Of which... World 2 of Mario 3 or World 2 of Mario World? Okay. Ah. Oh. I'm so glad I get to talk about this level again. I would have done a video just on this level. I love it. I love this level. And if you don't have fun playing it, that's okay. What I do get to talk about here is the design philosophy. And this design philosophy permeates in the game. And the... Oh. 
Okay, so again, before controlled environment, we're going to learn really quickly about, okay, auto scroller. We're going to give you an opportunity to, to learn how to jump on the platform. Not a big deal. Okay, fine. So we're going to do that. We're going to learn about how these work for the first time. Okay, cool. I'm not going to spend too much energy on that. So the first thing here, this part is wonderful. Because like I mentioned before, I could take, ah, I could take the easy path. And the easy path is going to be the jump on this platform, jump on this platform, jump on this platform. And this is going to be easy for two reasons, because it's a less esoteric path. It's just easy for me to jump, jump, jump. And this is four blocks of space that I'm going to land on. If I choose to come down here, it's going to be two blocks of space. Let's see if I didn't screw myself up. Because I probably did. Boom. All right. So this is a much harder path to take because of the two blocks. So there's a choice here. There's an evaluation. And there's a choice that did not exist. I compare this to the third level in Yoshi's Island 1, where there isn't a lot of evaluation. This gave me an evaluation. I have a choice to make. And if I choose to continue to explore and engage with this, I get that. Now, that block is so wonderfully placed because it's actually another obstacle in my ability to execute on trying to get that. And because I hit it from the proper side, it went in the direction that I needed it to. So this is a combination of choice, evaluation, deciding to engage with the risk and getting a reward. It doesn't happen in Mario World. That's the whole, that's what level design is. It's it's what, what choices are you gonna choose? Are you gonna choose the hard path or are you gonna choose the easy path? That, and that's just the start. So the next part, where it gets even more delicious, so we're going to see. Now, I'm only large Mario. And as, as large Mario, the reward that's going to come up, I can't get without execution. I'm going to need this Koopa Troopa. There's a reward coming up. As, the, as Raccoon Mario, I could just get it easy. As... Okay. As Raccoon Mario, I could get it easy. Or I have to engage with this. And I have two ways of engaging with this. I could, if I'm small Mario, I have no choice. I have to use the Koopa Troopa and I have to, I have to hit the block to get the reward. If I'm big Mario, if I recall, I could do that, right? So as big Mario, I could still now get the one up. I'm going to save here. Ah, I'm not. All right, let's, let's die. That's fine. That's fine. I'm going to run through this quick. Yeah, for babies, but you have control over that. All right, so I'm going to... Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's great. That's wonderful, but okay. Yeah, I know. That's why they made Mario World a lot easier. That's what they kept doing, and I don't really care for it, because Mario's an easy game. It's not Ninja Gaiden. It's Mario freaking 3. Okay. Alright, so, right here. There's a 1-up coming. I could choose to not get it at all. If I have the Raccoon Leaf, I could get it easy. If I, if I have big Mario, I could have gotten the raccoon leaf. I could have engaged with this, which would have been challenging because this platform here is coming at me. So it's actually thoughtful, right? So this platform's coming at me, which makes it slightly harder for me to get the, the, the raccoon leaf if I even could get it, right? And it's an auto scroller level. So there's a lot of pressure and a lot of quick decision making. But because I don't add the raccoon leaf, because I'm not, because I was small Mario, I'm penalized. But even though I'm penalized, I could still get the reward by better execution. So that's the beauty of this level. There's so many ways in this one section for me to go about this. And if I learned how to do this and I'm willing to engage with it, boom, boom, boom. And I suck. I should have gotten the one up. I don't know how I pull that off. So I didn't execute on it. But there's a one up in that block. And I didn't execute. And that's actually a great example of because I didn't have the raccoon leaf, I couldn't get the one up as easy and I failed to execute. So that's the beauty. So whether you're small Mario, 
Big Mario, Raccoon Mario, and that one little section affects so much of what you are going to do or can do. Now, same thing here. I could choose to take the easy path, or I can engage with this and get more rewards. I engaged with it, got the rewards. I could choose the easy path, or I could keep trying to get these coins here. I milked every coin I could. So, I'm playing poorly because I'm trying to do two things at the same time. But the beauty of the level, and maybe I just suck at games, that's fine too. Well, I don't, I don't feel that way at all. I think, I think every moment, if you sit with it, there's actually interesting stuff happening. And Mario World, you just, that's the one you just slog through. Um, but that's why I have to go through the levels. But yeah, World 1-4, there are choices. There are actual choices to make. And you can say, well, okay, so what? You could take different paths. Big deal. That's not, that's, not, um, that's not much of a big deal in level design. And I would agree with you. I don't think that is a big deal in level design. It shouldn't be, at least. I thought that was pretty basic and bar none, except you go back. And you play like, you play like this crap here. And it's just, there's nothing. You just run, jump. There's nothing to evaluate. I'm just running and jumping. Running and jumping. That's it. There's no reason for me to sit with anything here. At all. So even that, the subtle thing. Like again, if there was like, I could eat that guy and then I spit something out there and I get a reward or something, that would be cool. But they never even give you that opportunity, which I still don't understand because it's like, it's one thing to make an easy game, but you could still give the players who want more of a challenge something off the beaten path to engage with. But it's just, look, there's nothing. There's nothing for me to really stop and sit with. Nothing. I just go straight. And so th there's no reason World 1-4 doesn't do that. World 1-4 gives you things to do, gives you things to evaluate, gives you choices to make, makes you feel rewarded for the things that you have. I'm not rewarded for this Yoshi, and I'm not rewarded for the Fire Flower, because the level design doesn't allow for it. Okay, yeah, okay, defend it, because it's not. It does nothing. It doesn't do anything. Just running... And I don't know if you're trolling me or not. Yeah, no, this games are are about interesting choices. If there are no interesting choices, it's just a game of execution, which anyone can do. And then here's the other thing. R regardless of whether or not it's better, if this is fun for you, fine. But this is way easier to design for. This takes no sophistication. Why am I doing this? There's no choices. And then it's and then you're not rewarded. So this is the other thing. All right? This is what I didn't mean didn't say. Because the choices and the rewards the choices and the rewards are what makes the power-ups useful. So this would be like so I have the Yoshi, it does nothing for me in this level. I have the Fire Flower, it does nothing for me in this level. So it's like designing a Spider-Man game and putting him in a desert. So the web slinging doesn't even do anything, and it doesn't even mean anything. Yeah, they're good mechanics. So I, will, I won't tell you that there aren't any good mechanics in the game. There are good mechanics in the game. They just don't build on them nearly as interestingly as they could. And I know why, because it's not focused. They didn't, they, and, and they said it, Miyamoto said it himself, that they didn't have enough time to finish this game, and it was rushed. And I know it was rushed because I could feel it because of the lack of focus. N some of them do. None, no level is designed like Yoshi is the star of the game. Every, almost every level in Mario 3, the raccoon leaf, you're rewarded for having it. So why do I have the fire flower in this level and why do I have the Yoshi? So I don't get the Yoshi, the Yoshi is useless in this level. It's useless in the first one. It's you don't even get to use it in the fortress level. There, there, why? There's so much you could have done with the Yoshi in this game. If you had more spiked platforms, if you had a need to jump off of them more, if you used the Koopa shells more interesting throughout the level design, it's not fully well thought out. They just threw stuff at you because they didn't know what they were making when they made the game, and they practically admitted it. But yeah, if you, again, 
It, 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 what is this game about? And it's not clear to me. And so you, there's no reward for the thing. You want to feel rewarded for the thing that you got. So again, it's like getting web slinging ability in Spider-Man and not having buildings to swing off of. Like that's fine occasionally if it's like, oh, we're going to make you feel like we're taking your powers away. But you don't want to play an entire game like that. You want the level design to match what it is that you're doing. So in that one section in 1-4, you can feel penalized for having small Mario or big Mario, rewarded for having raccoon Mario. But even if you don't have it, you have a choice still to recover and get the one up because you could execute. And if you execute, you feel rewarded. So you feel rewarded for either your status or your execution. And a level like this, you're not really, re you're definitely not rewarded for your status and you're definitely not rewarded for your execution. And so if you just want to play a game that's just kind of a baby game where you want to run and jump. And again, they, they said it. They said it. They said it um, as much. They made a game that was made to be a lot easier. And I think it came. Yeah, no. Right. You're right. And that level had a lot of potential. No, what invalidates it is that you never see the pokies ever again is one reason it invalidates it. It you don't see them again. You don't really see the spikes much later in the game. You don't see the po you don't see I don't think you see the pokies again until Star Road. So that level 1 3 level 1 4 is a real tease because there's a lot of potential and you don't really see that potential. I, I have to make the video because I got to go through every level because it doesn't add up. Yes, yeah, so what if he could eat them? But if he can't do anything with them because the levels aren't designed to do much with them. Honestly, all the bonus games and all of the Mario's bore me, but so I'm just going to... I've never done that before. Good for me. Occasionally... Like the Goomba, the, the shoe. But that's not, but primarily the main, the main stars of the game are the main stars of the game throughout. And which means you could take a concept and milk it to its final conclusion. So like Portal does this really, really well. Portal is a tutorial game. But what Portal does is it takes a couple of mechanics and it shows you how much you could do with them. What's up? Did I not beat this level? I didn't save it. Yoshi eats the obstacle. You're, are you talking about the pokies? Yeah, I, I need to keep reiterating. The mechanics themselves are not bad. It's just that they don't utilize them enough and they don't build on them enough. So the pokies, the pokies what I was saying is it's, brill it's wonderful, the pokies. The Pokies are a wonderful enemy for Yoshis to interact with. I don't think they should get shorter, but they're a wonderful enemy for Yoshi to interact with. The problem is, you only see it in, in that one level. If you don't go through Star Road, you'll never see it again. So it's a whole game that never takes advantage of the stuff that it actually gives you. Because it keeps throwing shit at you. And if this world didn't throw giant bullet bills at you and Rexes that you barely ever see again and all these other things, it would build on, it would have something to build off of. Pokies are a great design enemy against the Yoshi. But you don't really see them. But there's a lot you could do with them. And that's my issue with this game. It's not that it doesn't have good ideas. It has good ideas. But the, but the level design is not sophisticated enough to actually leverage those good ideas in a way that's very, very interesting. And I know that's what the developers meant when they said we didn't have enough time to finish this game. Because what they didn't do, because Mario 3, Tezuka says, we went through the game and I realized that the raccoon leaf wasn't useful enough. So we put ramps, we put these runways throughout the game to make them more useful. And that's what happens when you have more des time to finish your game. Is you could look at stuff like that and see, oh, we need to tighten this up. We need to make these other things more rewarding. There are plenty of 
oh good mechanics in Mario World. You, I, I don't hate Yoshi because I hate the concept of Yoshi. I hate Yoshi because the level design isn't really utilizing it as often as it should be. Are there people here? <laughs> Sorry. A little ranting. <laughs> Even Dario bounced out. He's like, enough of this. <laughs> I mean, and I think that's really finally my final thesis statement about it. It's not even just that. It's like, look, if, if someone enjoys this game more, that's fine. But, but I'm, the sophistication and level design in this is, it's not nearly as sophisticated. It's not nearly as tight. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not crazy about the way they handled fire flowers in either Mario 3 or World. Yeah, I can't stand this. I don't have much to say off the top of my head about this level, so don't expect me to say much. This level's okay. I, I will say... So like, this is where Yoshi would be useful for eating that guy. So alright, I this is a part two that really disappoints me, because this should be, this should be like... So in, um, in 1-2 of Mario 1, the Fire Flower, there's a part where there's two Koopa Troopas in a tight space like this, and the Fire Flower is really, really useful. Here, it's really not. It's like, okay, you get the Yoshi is more like you have a chance to allow yourself to get hit. But there isn't really much I could do about these guys, and I wish that there was something I could do better about these I Man. What choices? What choice? I mean, I, I made a video on this part alone. What's it to, to get what a freaking dragon coin and And by the way, that is a solid part that it's stuff like that if I saw more of that in this game I I'd be with you, but I don't That's not a that's a that's fine. I'm not I'm not gonna say that's a bad part. I'm playing bad, but that's a whole different matter. Yeah, I'm just not giving you a big de design analysis on this level because I wasn't planning on talking about. Okay. Wait, what? Oh, oh wow! I could go down the pipe. Big deal. Oh, I hate this part. <laughs> I hate this. I hate this part. I hate this part so much. Yeah, th that's this is what this game is telling you. Here we go. Coins all over the place, and for what? Just going down the pipe. I'm being a little bit of an ass with that one, but but it like the part by itself is fine. But they're just it does teach you about how to use these triangles. This is I I, I would say this of the of the levels in Super Mario World. I do think this is one of the better ones. So this is good. That's well done. The problem with the Yoshi here is that unfortunately the way this is designed, the way the game is designed, like if these were pokies down here and I could eat these guys, great, but they're not. They're charging chucks. So like going down here still kind of sucks. It's just more like a, oh, I could take the hit without dying. I'm not a fan of that. Like it should be, it should be, I... Yeah, if those were like pokies and I could do that and defend against them, great. Yeah, it, this isn't a terrible level. I, I, I wouldn't have thrown all these enemies at you. Cool, yay. Big deal. Big deal. When I just got like 25 one-ups in the stage before just for climbing a stupid gate. Big deal. 
I got a dragon coin. Cool, that's good. This is one of the better levels, except I don't care for the end. Because I don't care for this. I don't, I don't feel like unlocking this, I should have to go through this entire level again to, to be rewarded for this. And, and this to me is not a secret. I'm sorry, a key? A key and a keyhole? That's not a secret to me. I don't know what that is. I don't consider that secret that's all over this game. I don't care for it. I hate this game. Cool. This ain't a bad level. Um, they're fine. I don't... Like like I said, I, I think... I need to make clear... I do think the mechanics on their own in Mario World are fine. In fact, I think that's what people like about the game, whether they realize it or not. I don't think the level design is particularly good. I think the level design is minimum viable product. And I don't think it builds on concepts very well. So you see, like I've just been through like five, six levels and each each one is its own thing. And I don't, that's not good level design to me and that's not well thought out. That's, that's Mario Maker stuff. Anyone can do that. So I don't really, not to, not to belittle Mario Maker friends here because I've, I've made a Mario level myself or two and they're not as good as some of the ones in Mario 3, but I find this one boring. Like, this is okay. Like, but again, it's mostly... That, I mean, I'll say this, that's, it's nice to have the advantage of the Yoshi here. For that. So I am rewarded. I'll give it that. Are there any choices for me to make? No. I just move forward. And you know, the other thing too about Mario World and why I, I think being able to return to the levels go, works against it too. Because even if I miss something, it's just like, okay. Like, I don't care for this whole completionist mentality. Like, like there's just a... Because then you're just like gobbling stuff up. It's like, nom, 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 nom. And it's like, okay, cool. On one hand, I get it. But you kind of lose out on... I, I think I missed something. <laughs> like, if I'm going to go through an auto-scroller, I want to at least be running and jumping. I don't want to be going through this shit. I'm just sitting here waiting... Like, why does it matter that this flies across the screen? So, at best, what this does is is it shows the value of Yoshi. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. But this is boring as hell. <laughs> this is... And Mario 3 has some... I don't like Pipeland in Mario 3. And one reason I'm not playing the desert world in Mario 3 is I don't love that world either. Someone modded? I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's some words that I removed automatically. Yeah, I, I and and that's just a, a philosophy. I, I don't... I think it's less rewarding to me to be able to just keep going back. It, it, it just becomes... It turns Mario for me into... Um, being able to grind and being able to farm. And so you never miss out on anything. But I think missing out on stuff is, is itself rewarding. Alright, so now I what I know is happening is that Jason Graves <laughs> is going to take every opposite position of me. And I think there's a little bit of trolling here. I think you. I think you do agree that you. You. I don't think you think my complaints are the, of this game are completely valid. I will say that, but I do see the troll. Oh, uh, again, Ghost House. That's a big part of this game. Oh, fuck off, Yoshi. And uh, and this is a this is a matter of taste. I don't want. I 
if people like this type of level, fine. I don't like this type of level. I don't like puzzle solving in my Mario game. I'll I'll say that's a matter of flavor. I won't say that's objectively bad. It's a matter of taste. I don't like it. I forget how to get through it. I just want to run and jump and make choices. I don't want to I don't want to sit here trying to puzzle solve a game that whose puzzles are not that interesting. I forgot how to do this shit. I think there's like, do I go through this door? I... Well, what I think my... Uh, there's a counterpoint to everything everyone makes, and that's all good. You could- I, I don't have a problem with you countering it. But I don't- I don't think it's as well thought out. I- I think I could- whether or not it's better or worse. So we could- we could frame- we could get rid of the idea of better and worse. I'm saying I hate it. What do I hate about it? I think objectively, Mario World doesn't build on concepts as well. I think objectively it doesn't utilize the things that you that it gives you and exploits them as often and as regularly and as tightly. I think objectively the game is easier because they meant it to be easier and as a consequence of it being easier, you don't have as many opportunities to feel rewarded for the things you've learned and the things you've built on. I think objectively it's less focused. Now, does that mean it's objectively worse. I think it's objectively not as sophisticated of a design, but it doesn't mean people shouldn't like it as much. Uh, like, uh, let me throw this out. I will eat McDonald's french fries a lot more than I'll eat a five-star meal most of the time. I don't like the five-star meal, but it takes a better chef to make the five-star meal than the french fries. Yeah, I'm not saying there's nothing good about it. I'm just saying the level. I think the level design. Like, I'll, I think the level design is bad. I think the seamless maps takes away from the theming of feeling like you're traveling an interesting world. I think that it should have been more focused. I think there should have been less stuff. I hate the game. I'm not saying. I do. I think I do say the game sucks. So I can't. I can't say that I didn't make a video where I said the game sucks, because I did. But if I'm speaking here, I I have. I think I have valid reasons for not liking this game. Okay, cool. I don't. I don't care for this. I don't care for being able to return to the levels because you can't miss anything. And if you can't miss anything, it means you don't get rewarded for the things that you got because you can just keep hoarding and hoarding and hoarding. Now, look, I, is that my best complaint? It's not. It's not my best complaint. Yeah, it seems like it's more plain, except the thing is you could actually interact with the map in Mario 3 in a world way that you actually can't in Mario World. That's the surprising thing. Yay. Cool. That's This is cool. I'll give it this. The actual rest of the level... The, and it doesn't do that kind of thing nearly enough. The rest of the level, if I actually play this out... It's again, it's just more running and jumping. And there's no... There's no thought process to this. I just move forward. What can you miss if you could keep going back? If my memory serves me, I have no real way of knowing- yeah. This is fine. I mean, that's the other thing about Mario World. It's I, I won't tell you that every part is terrible, but I do think there strongly there are more terrible parts in Mario World than Mario 3. And that includes Star Freaking Road and half the shit that goes on there. Hey, what's up? It's, it's <laughs>
Hey, Jason, if you want to make the video, make the video. You tell me why it's one of the best levels in, in design history. Hey, if there were more levels than that, like that, I'm okay with that. Less... Yeah, this level is fine too. Yeah, I... The problem is, it's when I play the whole game, is I see more of the problems. World 1 is horrible. I think... And World 8 is horrible. So those... The bridge world is horrible. I still... I see very little reason to just not just plow forward. Yeah, the multi... So... Alright, let me try to talk seriously for a bit. Not that I wasn't. So, this is what, in my mind, is a missed opportunity. Hold on. The multicolored Koopas is an idea. It's an idea. Is it utilized to its potential? I don't think it is. And that's why I think this game would have been better served if there was no cape if and if it was yoshi and things were just designed around it and then i think you would have seen things like oh okay how do the multicolored koopas really affect the game and i think your level design would have to be centered around it more but because it it it's it has a lot of ideas and it's not clear in its own design what it wants this game to be about, it never really fully... Re Again, this is just... This is this is typical Mario World bullshit right here. Here, let's just make a path with, some, uh, with a bunch of the same enemies. It's this kind of bullshit is what bothers me. It's not this stuff before, it's this kind of bullshit. Just like in Cheese Bridge, where it's just like, here's just a bunch of Koopas on a, on a, on a, on a, you know, on a ground plane. That's bullshit to me. I'll give it a little bit of credit for then adding this. It's only used once. But the thing about that shoe is because Mario 3 is more grounded in its themes, when it throws a one-off at you, that's all it is. It's just a fun one-off. But the shoe gets introduced, I believe, in World 5. So you're already five worlds in. The game has already established itself. And I play through this game and it hasn't established itself. Because again... Goodbye, Yoshi. Fuck off. So it, it's still, it's not clear what is this game. Is this a game about Yoshis? Not really. Is it about the cape? I guess I could fly up here. I'll give it some credit for- can I? Yeah, that's cool. That's a nice little Easter egg. I don't want to engage with it right now. It's a nice enge Easter egg. But the problem is, is you have a world like this, which is about tight spaces, and no Yoshi. So your cape and your, and your Yoshis are like, what? Well, whatever. No, it's I No, I'm not saying that you can't have quote unquote open levels. It's it, but it's more like is it's like what but by having open levels you have you don't have you don't have things to evaluate as much as a player. So it's like it's like if you're editing a video or if you're writing a script, you don't want fluff. So if you're just going through open spaces, there's more fluff. The density in Mario 3 isn't we want to make a dense game. It's more like we're plotting what do we want the player to be thinking about when they're playing. And what at what moments, what are the consequences of their status and their decision making and their execution. That's what's happening. In, and I believe very strongly that one of the reasons for that is because they designed the game on paper. 
And I think because and they had limitations because they had smaller spaces. And I think by by designing the game on paper, one uh, and having more time, one of the things that happened is when they designed the game, they focused on the design of the level in that moment, and they were only thinking of the level. But when you're not designing on paper, there's kind of an opportunity to just kind of run around and jump. Now this is dense, but the density there's there's not that much. So like dense is it's not that it's dense that makes it good it good is is it dense and you have a choice to make you have something to evaluate it adds something in your brain where your brain is now making some decisions subconsciously so I'm fully in the Sid Meier great games are a series of interesting choices camp now you could have games that are just pure execution but I don't think those games are as interesting and so what made Mario unique is that actually, surprisingly, more than a lot of other platformers, it, it, Wario 1 and Mario 3, there are things to consistently evaluate. And that was the uniqueness of this game. So here, I firmly believe that the developers realized that the capes were useless in this level. And I think that's why, I think it was a last minute decision that they allowed this. Because that ain't allowed in Mario 3. I could do, now I could do this. And I will say that's a, this is a good part here because if I didn't have the cape, I'd be going up against the enemy and I wouldn't be able to do that. So that's good. I like this. These things need to happen more. They're few and far between. But that's a good, that's a good moment in the design right there. I, and I'm just like, even Mario 3, when they do stuff like this, I'm not a fan of. I don't like Pipeland in Mario 3. I don't care for these, like, waiting moments. This, this is the Ego Raptor sequelitis in me. I don't, I don't want to just wait if there's nothing interesting for me to evaluate. So 1-4, you're waiting in an auto-scroller, but there are decisions I can make and things I could do. This is a way, way better level than the first Fortress, by the way. That's some bullshit. <laughs> That's some fucking bullshit. You know what's also bullshit is I'm on a Yoshi and I can't fucking use it. That's some also that's also some bullshit. Sorry. Um Yeah, well I so the interesting thing is when you think about the shoe in Mario 3, it's kind of a precursor to Yoshi with the ability to jump on certain things. And they could have used that. And so, like, look at the mechanics of the Kabuki shoe in Mario 3. It's Yoshi with, without the tongue, right? You could jump on certain platforms and you could jump out of them and, and get higher air. So it's a precursor to Yoshi. Whenever you die... It feels like bullshit, <laughs> Trevor. Um, world is far more optimized for fast-paced gameplay in open areas, which makes it a blast after you've explored its many secrets. I don't consider any of its secrets to be secrets because I think if you just have a key and a keyhole, that doesn't feel like a secret to me. Um, I think it's too open in a lot of the spaces. Um... Again, my biggest complaint about World are, 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 again, mostly I just don't think that the level design is sophisticated and adds up. But okay. Uh, world throws is constantly... Yeah, too many too many new ideas. Like, that's my problem with World. It's too many ideas. It's not focused. And because it's not focused... Okay, yeah. So, look. I'm going to use a word that's generally... I'm going to use a word that's generally considered negative, and I'm just going to try to use it in a more neutral way. Mario World is a more shallow game. And I'm not saying shallow in a pejorative. So this is where it's a matter of taste. It's more shallow because it gives you more things, but it doesn't keep going deeper and deeper and deeper with those things. So by its definition, it makes it more shallow. And Mario 3, I think, is a deeper game because it continues to exploit ideas more and more and more. And I wish that Mario 3 did that more. Or did it even more. I don't think... 
I, I, I think it's barely a secret if there's a key and a keyhole and I could just grab the key and put it in the hole. I, I, it does, it's not a secret that excites me that much. And now I'm being a little bitchy right now, so so sorry. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not... When I make the video, I'm playfully mocking folks. I'm really not trying to get people to hate this game. I'm expressing why I don't like it. Go ahead and love it. And I am also want to express that, I, if I'm trying to be measured, is that a game that's universally praised and has become like, this is the de facto Mario 2 game, Mario game, I don't think it should be considered that. I think there's a very big case for Mario 3 and I think it's a bigger case. I think it's a way more sophisticated game. I guess that's an analogy. <laughs> I think it's French fries. But I think that's also what I, is not going to happen here is I think these levels get way, way worse over time. And I'm not going to play through this entire game right now because I, I get a feeling not everybody wants to see me do that. Um, but I, I think when I play, when, when I was make recording footage of this game, to make this video. I went into this thinking that this would be a game where I'd have to be like, oh, it's act it's pretty good, but you know, here are the pros, here are the cons. And by the time I got to the last world, shoot. By the time I got to the last world of this game, I just decided, no, I hate this game. It wasn't here that I decided I hated this game. It was when I got to Chocolate Island, when I got to Bowser's Castle, when I got through Star Road. That's when I was like, oh no, this isn't just a game that, uh, okay, there's, it's a matter of taste and there's some things I like and some things I, I have to make concessions on. It's by the time I got to the end of it, I hated it. I hated its theming. I, I, and I really thought what they did with the final world was incredibly bizarre. And I think that's really important because I think the way Mario 3 bookends is also just way, way better than Mario World, the way it bookends. And, you know, the, the first, the first world is your impression of the game. Thank you. Trevor. Should I wrap it up? I mean, thanks for indulging me. Alright, I think I'm wrapping up here. I did what I what I meant to do. I did what I what I meant to accomplish. Part of it was get a stupid rant out of me. Alright, I'll hang for a little bit. I'll play for a little bit. Um I don't I don't have much analysis in me anymore. Cause I was going into this prepared to talk about the first couple of worlds, but so I'll get a I'll get a re-impression of this game. I don't think I much care for Vanilla Dome. I, will I be able to articulate a cogent analysis of why? Probably not right now. Unless I see something that really irritates me. Thanks, Dario. I appreciate the help. Yeah, I probably do need to wrap up soon myself, but, uh... Something about straight lines really irritates me. It just tells me that you're, there's not the most interesting level design. But I do, th I do think in order to really articulate what I want to fully articulate here, it's going to have to be in the video format. Yeah, Mario 64, 
I'm not fond of. And if you've heard me talking about this these games, the reasoning behind it probably wouldn't surprise too many people. Because I, I really love... What I love about the power-ups in Mario games is that, to me, that when they're done really well, they feel rewarding. They feel like you did something with them. You feel rewarded for having them. And, and the carryover of power-ups matter to me. And in Mario 64, with that kind of not in play, with it not feeling... It just didn't feel like what I expect from a Mario game. I like Mario 3D World a lot and Mario 3D Land a lot. Um, but yeah, I think because I don't think I have anything interesting to say right now, uh, I'm going to wrap up and I really, I really appreciate you guys being here. I didn't do anything wrong. I, d I don't think you did do anything wrong. Uh, and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate everyone who was here. And uh, I'm going to wrap up though. Uh, I appreciate... Yeah, it's actually... There are more than I was expecting. Because I know that my... Yeah, Mar they were kind of... I understand why they did what they did. Especially like it's an early game. I, I think in a lot of ways it's a precursor to Ocarina of Time. Which I love. But, um, but yeah. Uh, I appreciate all of you for being here. Uh, thanks to, uh, to those who came to check it out. Thanks to the subscribers. Uh, hopefully, like, even, like, even if you don't agree with my takes, at least I did still show, like, hey, what's the thought process, um, in some ways of designing a level, and at least what I think Mario 3 did really, really, really well. Um, so I, I appreciate you guys. I'm